welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Pardon me, I'm just going to be tracing over someone else's work as I do this because, you know, creativity is dead, apparently. Oh, really now? Lo and behold, maybe the actual production staff will use my tracing of someone else's work to create their own work. Me. Huh. That's oddly specific. I wonder why. Hmm. <laughs> also joining us today is Tatera. Uh, I think I might be allergic to tracing. Oh, you don't like tracer? No, no, tracing. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> she is love. The cavalry's here. Stop drawing my butt. <laughs> no, your butt must be drawn. Booty, booty, yeah, booty. Oh, me. I still have that video on my channel. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, is there immortalized? But anywho, <laughs> in today's <laughs> what? I didn't say anything. Just I just gave, I just can't go. <laughs> okay. Anyway, in today's episode, we are going to review My Little Pony Friendship is Magic Comic eighty one. In this issue, Scootoo and Rumble learn about the only Earth Pony to become a member of the Wonder Bolts, and it's not Pinkie Pie. So, before we head into set review, uh, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Ah, uh, well, I have I have issues on with this issue with this issue on multiple levels. Uh, the aforementioned throughout this, we're going to be noting uh, events where this the artist inserted vectors uh, of the from the show, maybe even the, t- made by the community itself. Oh. Which is a very weird thing to see. Hmm. And, but with, for the story, I am fascinated by the idea of an earth pony wanting to be a Wonderbolt. Uh, and so, but the funny thing about when you introduce an element like this, you then have to ask, how does this change the world? How do people, how, how is Equestria different as a result of this? And there are a lot of unanswered questions. In particular, well, a certain design that should be available to the public, I think. But it's not. Hmm. How dare. Interesting, interesting. Uh, I guess we can talk about it when we get into it. Uh, Tara, what about you? Also, Norman, I'm going to have to fault you there. (laughs) (laughs) Well... I, I like the story. I like the idea of, you know, an, an Earth Pony becoming a Wonder Bolt. I was in, into the story. Like, I actually liked it. It's very memorable. The only thing that I kind of don't like is that basically what Silver said. And like, you know that uh, they basically traced, they took the art style of uh, the show. Or they could have, uh, 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 this this thing is just making me stutter. <laughs> How do I say this? They basically just copied some uh, vectors from the show. Like you can tell by some of them, the the panels that's it's straight from the show. You know it. It could either be the body, but they just drew over uh, a head. Like they drew the head, but they how do I? You know what I'm going with right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand what you mean. I understand what you mean. And um, as for me, uh, I like the story. The story is really awesome. It's really inspiring and it's really, let's just say I like the story. But uh, I kind of forgot about the drama around this one. So Silver, um, usually uh, I the, the, the method we want to do this is when we go through it, you highlight the parts and whatnot. But I, I have a strong feeling that this, is, this covers almost everything. So uh, backstory, Silver. Backstory of, of what the the issue or the art, um, the drama. Well, mostly it's the as far as I know, uh, Nicoletta Baldari, Baldari. Yep. Uh, I don't believe she's worked on issues before. That this is new frontier for her, and you can kind of tell that she has a very unique style, very big on low angle, uh, shots. And express the characters in different ways. But throughout it, she also takes a lot of shortcuts. On the second page, there's a shot of Rumble in a Wonderbolts outfit 
But clearly from the way he's posed, the way he looks compared to other characters, and some of the errors, like missing wings, he's a modified vector of the Cutie Mark Crusaders. He doesn't even have any ears. Then in, the, then in a panel right next to it, Rainbow Dash is smiling, apparently approving of the Scooter Rumble ship. But it looks, it's a shot right out of the show. It's not her style. It's a, it's a vector, possibly from the fandom. I think with a little searching, you could find this in the MLP Vector Club. Much later, when they're going through the Wonderbolts Museum, you see photos of General Firefly, Admiral Fairweather, and Commander Easy Glider, all of which were lifted from the, from the Wonderbolts handbook. It also, in those same panels, Scootaloo and Rumble have the exact same pose duplicated three times over, back to back. So basically, you have uh, some examples of a character, well, of an artist, and about this, not putting forth their own work. And this is important. Why is, why is tracing considered a bad thing? Well, because really, part of what I enjoy about comics is seeing the artist's work. If, even if I don't necessarily agree with the style, or I'm not on board with it, I want to at least be able to comment on the work. This is not her work. It's just borrowing from other people. And as a result, especially when she's paid to make this, uh, I feel like we're being slighted. Mm-hmm. Now, I say as I say this, I am working on a vector of our, uh, Starlight Glimmer's whole hometown. You know, our town. Mm-hmm. Our town, our town. But then no one's paying me to make this comic. I'm still going to draw the characters as they interact with this environment, and I'm going to modify the environment. It's a stepping point, and I'm going to make it available for other young artists. It's part of what I enjoy about the MLP fandom. They put in a ton of effort to duplicate the look, and then they make it available to other members of the community. You can't even say that about Miss Baldari's efforts. And I'm not... Okay, I need to do a quick search to see if she's done any other work since then. All right. While while you do that, uh, I'm I'm just gonna comment a bit. Uh, yeah, I, I understand what you mean, and I see what where you're at because um, looking at the uh, comic again with uh, with with a new perspective, I do see stuff now. Uh, like you mentioned before, on page two, you get to see Rumble in the Wonder Balls uniform, missing stuff. I I thought that was a very odd error that they have but you know what it's one of those things where you could forgive because hey uh derps happen so yeah but the rainbow dash thing once you pointed that out it looks very familiar and if you zoom in at the uh page at the last panel where rainbow dash is you can clearly tell that they crop it out and there's even the uh, transparency copy pasting. You know what I mean when you open up uh, Illustrator or even Photoshop, and when you make the backgrounds transparent, and you have that checkerboard stuff. You know what I mean? Yes, there's white uh, between her legs and between her back leg and tail. Yeah, and that's a given. And th- the thing is, uh, Miss. Uh, Nicoletta, her work, uh, her art is not bad. Like she has her own style, and it's really interesting. I I kind of dig it. But why take shortcuts? This touches on something uh, even bigger than the IDW MLP. It, this is not the only franchise where tracing is an issue. Uh, I learned from a YouTube channel called Eckhart's Ladder that uh, Star Wars. When they're drawing all these fleets, all these mighty ships in space, a lot of them are traced works, including of fan-made vessels. And it causes a stir, a brouhaha, a fracas, if you will. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I I, I feel like when it comes to fan work, uh, fans copying fans, it's, it's it's not nice but as long as you credit me and whatnot i i don't really mind uh, i i do see uh you do that in your work a bit silver with backgrounds if i'm not mistaken 
Yes, I try to credit the folks who made it available and help me out. Yeah, so those are kind of okay because, well, you're not getting paid to do it. You're doing it for fun and you're giving back to the community by uh, giving out your vectors. Background vectors, I'm not second, right? Yeah. So it's a uh, passing it forward kind of deal. But in the case for comic book artists that get paid, that, where's my cut? Give me money. Pay me. Now, I think it's also worth asking, okay, these artists in both apparently Star Wars, Marvel, and, uh, and IDW may need to rely on shortcuts. The question then follows, well, why do they feel the need to that they have to take a bunch of shortcuts? They're, people are quick to point out to accuse laziness. And I'm not going to make that accusation. I don't know this artist personally. I'd like to know what kind of deadline she was facing, what kind of workload was she facing. Is it possible that this was just the best she could do with the time she had? And while it's still disappointing, I just want to know the factors involved. Because very often, you know, a comic artist is not drawing just a comic. They're usually working on several. That's the way the industry goes now. But then when you're pulling your artists in multiple directions, why can you be surprised if they feel they have to take shortcuts? I mean, shortcuts are good, but I, I think the way it's done like um that you mentioned before the panel where you have the three different images but the ponies are still in the same pose those are shortcuts that okay it's for it can be forgiven because it's almost the same thing and they're just trying to tell a story probably you can do more beyond that but hey um it's one of those scenarios it doesn't really matter but um, beyond that, I, I don't know. It feels like laziness. I, like I mentioned before, what goes behind them is also one of those things that we want to know. Tortera, we haven't really involved you in this discussion. <laughs> well, you guys have pretty much explained it very well. I mean, I do agree. And I know I've seen some of these, uh, how do I say it? poses i guess you could say because i know some people also do the thing where it's like um hey let's i like the way this this body poses but i don't like the face so they cut off the head and they either draw their own head on that body or say like they cut off the head of one pose but they cut off the body of another pose and just keep the face and they basically put the face on that other body to basically be like, yeah, this is a whole new vector that I created myself. But it's like, no, you just cut it off a head and put it on a different body pose. It's kind of hard to justify doing that. But at the same time, too, it's it speeds up the process. Well, again, that gets to the question of how much time are the artists being given to work on this stuff? Uh, that is also true. And I, I'm... Looking back at previous comics where you mentioned before that, oh, um, some people, uh, like some people, arts are not that great, but they still do it by hand and uh, we can comment on it. And yeah, I I'm looking at Agnes Garboska. <laughs> That's a name that hasn't come up in a while now. And I dare say that a lot of fans don't appreciate her work. It's not to their liking. But personally, for me, I find it very fascinating. It's it's a different style that's not. Uh, let's just say it's not show canon, but it's close and it's unique. Well, I will also say, after a quick search, uh, it looks like this is the only issue that Bal uh, Baldari drew. She did a cover for MLP eighty two, but that's as far as it goes. I think. Yeah, and I, I guess the backlash from this one really um, hit IDW hard and they didn't want to do anything with her. But at the, at the same time, too, it's not... Uh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, this also reminds me of another artist who, quote-unquote, did something similar. Jay Foskett? Uh, probably, but he he kind of learned his lesson later on. 
and did less of that. But still, I don't see him doing much more comics. Huh. Fascinating. I think he's moved on from MLP. Yeah. Now, this is the... Uh, remember the what uh, Diamond Tiara Silver Spoon with that one other pony? Babs? No, no, no. Um, the comic uh, almost looked like Velma. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, do people have an issue with that? Yeah, I, 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 I think... It's not the art. I think it's um, self-insert. Ah, people always make that accusation. Yeah, but that's another story for another day. But anyway, uh, we review time, not read. Pause here, go do. Welcome back. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> so we start off the comic with, well, um, the group, our our group, um, the brother-sister combo, Rainbow Dash and Scootaloo with Thunder Lane and Rumble. Uh, they are visiting the Wonder Balls Academy and... Rumble gets to fly with the Wonder Bolts. That's cool. Um, I think what it's um flying for trial something like that. Silver. As far as I know, it's just a chance for the young to fly with the Wonder Bolts. All right, but anywho, uh, Rumble is very excited for participating with the Wonder Bolts and whatnot, and changes uniforms. He gets into a Wonder Bolt, a Wonder Bolt outfit, and yay! Uh, he's excited to fly with the group and Rumble just explains uh, no showboating, uh, just follow orders and whatnot. And we get to see Scootaloo hugging Rumble. That's cool. Yay, ship. Ship, 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 ship. Especially after their rather conflicted encounters in, uh, was it Marks and Recreation? But say, you know what they say, uh, opposite attracts and whatnot. Oh, not the whatnot. I know. Anything but the whatnot. But anywho, continuing on, we see, uh, okay, I, I have to admit, uh, this confuses me. I, I got no idea what I was seeing here, because we get to see uh, Spitfire leading the crew, flying up in the air. We see Rumble in the back trying to keep up, and then we see this pony, um, what you call this, Red Bank, uh, she's showboating. And somehow, Rumble got hit or something like that by Rainbow Dash. And he falls to the ground. Good thing there is a cart of hay that broke his fall. But he has a spring wing and is grounded for a while. I'm going to pause here because... What, Silver? What, what, what? Why are you, why are you asking me to explain all this? <laughs> uh, the part where Rumble gets... Uh, bump, I, I, I don't know. What's that about? They're implying through the dialogue that Red Bank is going too fast. Her philosophy is faster is better. But here's the thing. You have Rumble bumping into what looks like a rainbow. Which, okay, granted, rainbows have been presented as physical in the show. Like, tangible. But uh, Red Bank is on his left. Passing him with a yellow streak. So where is this rainbow coming from? Is it is it another Wonderbolt flying? Is she forcing him into the uh, jet streams of all the other Wonderbolts who've already gone past? Yeah, or is that Rainbow Dash being a jerk? Uh, no, Rainbow Dash doesn't come off as very jerky, this, uh, this issue. So I don't think that's it. But there's a the thing. We don't see Rainbow Dash flying. So we uh, kind of automatically assume that, okay, that's not Rainbow. But at the same time, too... Those colors are quote unquote rainbow dashes color, and you kind of ask, "Is that rainbow? Why? 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 Why?" Well, look to the look at the panel to the left of it, the the first panel. Note that each of the Wonderbolt has a trail color that matches the rainbow. All right. I mean, when you break it down that way, that's explained a lot. But still, uh, I I think this is one of the weakness for Nicoletta because. Um, certain scenes that she quote unquote drew doesn't make sense like this one like um, how do I put this from panel to panel the 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 way that the art is structured it doesn't really make sense um, we, we get to see the part where the Wonder Bolt is flying why is Rumble out of formation and why is the other uh, newbie kind of 
I mean, there's a lot of questions. I mean, once you kind of know what to look for, you kind of get it. But in first, at first glance, you don't. Like, you need to understand what's going on. Then you can uh, probably figure it out. Or I'll let someone else explain it to you. And I, I think that was, that is one of her weakness. And action scenes are not her strong point. Honestly, I haven't seen enough of her work to comment on that beyond what we're witnessing. Mm, probably she's great at um, bipedal characters. Probably. Well, too bad. This is quadruped country. We don't take kindly to you bipedal types, right? Yeah? But anywho, I'm going to pause here. And Silver, what do you think? Well, I mean, it's a decent setup right off the bat. You have you have the concern for Rumble's safety. You have a kid who has caused the accident, but we don't know her, so it's not, like, actively malicious. Although, Scootaloo isn't... is there just as sort of a cheering section at the moment. And I'm not used to Scootaloo being, uh, you know, if, she, if it's not the other Crusaders, I've never known her to be a passive involvement in any story. Hmm, makes sense. And Tara, what about you? I mean, I can't say much either. It's still, basically the setup, but it's a it's a good setup. The, although, like we talked about earlier, with all the questions, it's like, but Rumble's out of formation. You know, he's back. He's back at the pack. Red Bank goes faster, and yet somehow Rumble hits the rainbow. All that stuff. It's so confusing to me. But you know, at least it gets the story going. At least. Yeah, it feels like this is just a setup for. Okay, we need Rumble to be in bed or bit ridden and it doesn't involve the mafia oh okay this this works your brothers hasn't paid up his fines now we gotta take your legs <laughs> uh Afini, ain't they gonna hurt that's the point you mugs now get to cracking <laughs> uh, well, anyway we gotta move on uh boys but anywho um moving on we get to see uh, thunder lane telling rumble that okay no flying for a bit we need to make you heal uh, so you better listen and whatnot. Scootaloo here says, you know, you, they say that you can fly, but doesn't mean you can explore the place. So let's explore the place. So they reach to a restricted area of the Underboss Academy. I think what is the museum or something like that. And they see that there's a lot of, uh, what you call this, statues to previous heroes. And... Uh, Silver, you mentioned that you've seen this before in the Wonderbolts, what do you call this? The Wonderbolts Handbook, yes. The, all, all the portraits of these famous leaders are lifted straight out of that book. <laughs> and with the whole Scootaloo and Rumble not changing poses. <laughs> all right, then. So, as they walk by, they see General Firefly, who doesn't look anything like G1. And then they see Admiral Fairweather and also Commander Easy Glider. And they pass by a statue. And say statue is an earth pony. Wait, what? And a voice of panel says, that's Windsock. Sock? Is that how you say it? S-O-C-K? Sock? W yeah, Windsock. All right. Then. So uh, there's a pony, a high-ranking pony. Saying that, okay, chill, chill, chill. Uh, if you want to learn, I can tell you guys about stuff. And uh, you stumble across a statue of the only Earth Pony to ever become a member of the Wonderbolts. And he is pretty cool. Rumble says, I, I thought Pegasus ponies were only one ponies could be Wonderbolts. And this guy, I got no idea who his name is, says that, oh, time for backstory. So, we get to go to the past where we get to learn about uh, Windsock. Windsock, from a very early age, always wanted to be a Wonderball. But the only problem is that he is an Earth Pony. So, uh, he's determined to become a Wonderball and took the only job that he could get. And that is to become a janitor at the Wonderball HQ. But in reality, he really wants to fly and invent stuff that allows him to fly. The other ponies don't really appreciate him because, well, he is an elf pony and everybody's an elitist. They explain that Windsock creates a lot of 
gadgets and doohickeys that doesn't work and fail. So that doesn't deter him from his dreams. So one day, there's a pony that got hurt because, well, he was showboating in an area where he's not supposed to showboat. And now he's stuck in a cavern below with a broken wing and no way out. The rest of the Wonder Bolts couldn't get to him because if they do, they would be hurt like him. And did they mention who is this whim pony? No, I don't think they ever ma- gave the name. All right, then anyway, I'm carrying on. So they try to figure a way to get to said pony, but they couldn't. So Windsock here hears this and is determined to try and help uh, the wounded pony. So he gets to the, what you call this uh, area where the wounded pony is, and we get to see some of the Wonder Balls try to uh, lower a, uh, what you call this, stretcher. But I don't think it reaches that low. My pro tip to you guys, get more rope. But anywho, uh, we see that Windsock here has an invention that he wants to try out with the gang. And the rest of the pony says that uh, we're all out of ideas. And this is, uh, if he has an idea, let's, let's worth the, it's worth a shot and let's see what he can do. So, uh, long story short, Winsock Too late. <laughs> Winsock here invents, uh, yeah, invents a glider that helps him, quote-unquote, fly. So, I am going to pause here. So, Tara, what do you think? Well, I kind I I do like the different uh, type of story. How you know, an Earth Pony wants to be a a Wonder Bolt, and he makes he tries to make himself a pair of wings. I kind of see that as a way of um, uh, almost like a Cinderella story or like the um, the Rockhoff story. How you know they make fun of him because he wants to be a warrior, but you know he's all skin and bones. Same with uh, Windsock. You know he doesn't have wings, but you know he's 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 not gonna give up on his dreams. He wants to become a, a Wonder Bolt. And he, he has the opportunity, and he seized it. And li- like I said, I, I like the difference. And, you know, that's something we don't hear every day, you know. I uh, uh, wish that, you know, the show would say something about it, but, you know, it's cool. At least we got it in a comic form. And, I like I, said, I like it. <laughs> All right. Silva, what about you? Windsock the flightless pony had a very bright end game. <laughs> nah, I lost it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. How do you change very shiny nose? It doesn't. He you know, he doesn't. Very streaky mane. He doesn't have anything that's outstanding. Well, he's got an imagination and apparently very strong engineering, but that's hard to rhyme with nose. First off, I need to issue a correction. They're, they do actually say the name of the down pony. Uh, the pony's name is Dauntless. Dauntless. Where where does it say? Let's see here. Uh, this is r- right as Windsock is charging to aid. You see a very low angle shot of the stretcher and the three Wonderbolts trying to talk to him. Saying Dauntless can't stay down there forever. Oh yeah, okay. So that's it. so the speaker is General Dauntless. Ah, uh, alright. Here's the funny thing. In fantasy especially, it's very tempting for cultures to revolve around ability determined status. You you have to be able to fly to be a Wonderbolt. Hey, that's a pretty standard um, requirement. Yeah, that, well, it seems very practical. You wouldn't give that title to someone who couldn't fly. Who couldn't fly? But then, right off the bat, you've created an exclusion, a division, and a division can cause resentment or challenge someone. And so that's where often a lot of the conflict leads. Uh, right now, I'm reading the Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks, where where magicians are able to craft uh, magic through light, oh. and as such, there's a very you the greater the more colors in the spectrum you can craft, uh, the more talent you have, the higher your station. Again, uh, ability dictates a social status, so it's interesting to see this taking form. So I like Windsock. I don't know much about him, but I appreciate that he's striving for a goal, even though everyone's saying, no, no, that's that's physically impossible. And even there's a practical side of me says, yeah, 
that is physically impossible. Nothing is impossible. Nothing's impossible? How about uh, showing traced work in a comic? Is that good? <laughs> Can that be possible? Touché. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I suppose you could... <laughs> Actually, I'm thinking of Tony Fleece. Uh, when he changed the colors on a character poses in his own artwork, and he even laughed, oh, Silver Quill saw that I did that. He's got eyes like a hawk. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's a compliment. But anywho. So we have a conflict. We have a dreamer. And everyone loves the story of a dreamer. Someone who's striving to be more and not, not taking no for an answer. Terrell, what about you? Oh, I, I already said my claim. I was the one who went first. Oh, yeah. Sorry. My bad. Uh... Oh, Norman, you sounded really tired. We need to wrap this up. Yeah, almost, almost. So, um... He's losing it. Let me sip some hot water. Hot water? He hasn't sounded this depressed since we talked about pony life. <laughs> Sorry, this I, I, I really like this one. But the fact that the art is murdered with drama is what depresses me. But anyway, um uh, Silver, you ruined the comic for him. No, not really. <laughs> is it just a reality? Welcome. Welcome to Silver Ruins Everything, including comics and singing. <laughs> uh, but anywho. Uh, we, we see that uh, Windsock here has a glider. He puts it on. And this is trial zero one. What? Untested. So, yay. Yay. Oh, boy. So, anywho, uh, he jumps off the cliff and miraculously able to fly. And the reason for this is that his uh, glider... It's much more sturdy than, and sorry, uh, yeah. Here, here is. L- later, he realized that his glider was made, was was a flex, wing and more stable than Pegasus wing, in all those whipping winds. Okay, so, I'm sorry. It's it's fixed wing rather than fl- oh, uh, flex. Sorry, wing. my bad. Uh, fixed wing. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, they explain that, okay, his wings are gliders are that way, reason, blah, blah, blah. And it's awesome. Okay, okay, okay. So we get to see that, okay, he managed to get to Dauntless and rescues him by uh, harnessing up with the canvas and pulling him up. This doesn't explain how he got lift. Yeah, there's not really much to say. It's all because he did say it was a glider, but he's go he's going up with the glider. I mean, if you play Breath of the Wild, it works right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna say if you also play Minecraft, it works too. You just gotta have some fireworks. <laughs> no, fireworks make sense because it propels you, but gliders. Um, uh, comic ruin zero of one. I'll hold my piece as I talk about the larger... <laughs> what? Yeah, I know. But anywho, carrying on, we see that <laughs> Wind, Windsock safe, Thoughtless, and uh, the Admiral Pony, who was his name here again? I, I don't remember. Uh, uh, Dauntless. No, no, no. The Admiral, the, the one that is telling uh, Windsock that, yo, no, uh, grounds keep your A, which I'm going to call this... Uh, recruit. Now get in there and do the dishes. I'm drawing a blank at the moment. Yeah. I don't see his name in the uh, previous thing. Maybe he's one of the unpopular ones. <clears throat> but anywho, um, this general person pony here uh, credits uh, Winsock here and makes him a cadet in the Wonderbolts and Hence, he is the first Earth Pony to become a Wonderbolt. Yay. So, uh, Dauntless, or General Dauntless, or whatever he is, um, explains that his tech here is great and awesome, that we use it in a lot of things nowadays. So, he's awesome. So, because of his work, we get to do... or we, we get to implement it in day-to-day life, like carrying cargo and stuff. I mean, this is not the only invention that he made. There's more, but this is a really short comic. But anyhow, 
they see the blueprint for the glider and well Scutulu has an idea but it doesn't say much uh, Rumble here asks the general if you know him personally and says he did and he is the pony that is in the bottom of the canyon oh reveal Whoa! surprise yawn really <laughs> Nah. <laughs> I mean, I, I I didn't expect it until well near the very end. I, I did. Really? Sorry, but I did. <clears throat> I mean, come on. Usually, when someone's explaining a story of you know, oh, this person was a hero, and then it always ends with, "Yes, he saved my life." What? I did not see that coming. No, <laughs> it's similar to Master Chef. I'm not even gonna dignify that. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, in the next day, the board announcer just says, Welcome, every pony, to the what, uh, Full and Friends Air Parade featuring the Wonderbolts and some future Wonderbolt cadets. Okay, yeah, uh, board ponies board. There's two ponies that are saying that, okay, um, this mom, well, it feels like I've seen her flying, really, you know. The younger pony is Red Cloud, the one who cut Rumble off and somehow got things wrong. But the other one, uh, the red-maned mother, she was one of the Wonderbolts flying alongside uh, Red. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, oh, okay. That's fascinating. So, it's basically um, mother, daughter, brother, whatever it is, combo. Okay. Yep. And apparently she's grounded along with her daughter and now they're pissed at each other. I... uh... I just have to say that this doesn't really mesh well. Like, we, we don't see, we don't know what's going on. All we know, they're, they're flying and we, we, this this bit of info is important. <sighs> Boy, okay, anywho, uh, carrying on. After the scolding that the pony gets, uh, Scootaloo, sorry, no, uh, Sweetie Belle asks Scootaloo where's Rumble because... He would want to see this, right? I mean, he does like the Wonderbolt and he does want to see his brother fly. And Scootaloo just says, oh, he'll be along, he'll be along. And once the parade happens, we see that, oh, okay, uh, the Wonderbolts are coming out. And also Rumble in his glider. Yay, that's really interesting. Next, I just want to point out the, in that one panel where Rumble comes out and you see him on the glider and stuff like that, I found a perfect example of Silver Girl's point on the tracing. Mm-hmm. I just put it in the chat. It's almost the exact same pose as what Rumble's doing. Uh, I would say ah. it's general, not really. It's not that bad. Like, obviously, it's not the exact same pose. Like, you know, obviously, it's Rumble, so, you know, he's not an alicorn, but it almost looks exactly like it. Yes, heavily inspired yeah, by. Yeah, it's inspired yes. by. Okay, you want to know what's bad? Take a look, see at the first panel. Burn that in your brain. Now look at the last panel. It's the same. What, uh, which page? Oh, yeah, which page? Sorry, my bad. No, um, it's oh, page number what now is this? Uh, 21, where the Wonder Balls are introduced and then we get to see Rumble. That's my bad, my bad. It's, you know what? This is even worse. <laughs> Sorry, Norman, I'm, I'm very confused okay, now. Um, Are you talking about the panel where the um, the first panel where it shows the Wonder Bolts and you see the silhouette of Rumble? Are you pointing out that they all look the same? Uh, no. Oh, wait, it's the same pose. Yeah, the same pose, but uh, once you look at it, the main is different. But when you really look at it, why the hay is Rumble's hair like Pinkie Pie? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what you're talking about, Norman. Pinkie Pie is right there. The pink mane, the pink wings, it's obviously her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm okay. Um, uh, another obvious explanation that uh, I could say that that's Windsock, or the spirit of Windsock li- lives on, oh, or a vector but, of uh, him, or a vector of him. Although Pinky is on the co- cover of uh, the A cover, maybe this is a cameo to justify her. <laughs> Aha, Illuminati confirmed. Oh, and also that uh, Pegasus on the right. Of the Wonderbolts lineup. The one with the oh, yeah, I see, I see what you mean. <laughs> his his oh. wing is see through. Yeah. So, this, okay, 
I gotta say, the art in this has been really rough going. There's a there's an organic style here, heavy emphasis on uh, circles. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, I think Nicoletta Baldari is unfamiliar with drawing ponies and really, I think, struggling in this case. Probably, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, too, she's the one coloring for it, too. So uh, she's putting on more work for herself. And I, 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 but if you, if you look at another panel too, I might, I might be jumping ahead just a little bit. But on page twenty-two, when uh, Thunderlane's asking who Windsock is, he doesn't have the black nose or the eyeline or anything. He's his whole face is blue. And the Wonder Bolts are missing their lightning bolts on their legs. See all these little things. There's all these little hiccups through this comic. Which mm-hmm. is forgivable because. He, if you're not familiar with the IP, you, you kind of miss these sort of details. And yeah, like I said, it's forgivable, but I don't know. Sometimes it can take you out of the comic if you're if you're really picky, but I don't know. Like, like personally for me, I say it's forgivable because you, there's going to be cracks and they're going to... Some details are going to get slipped by. So... Yeah, in all honesty, the fault is should be on the editors. Well, either way. You can let go of little things like forgetting lightning bolts, but after a while, you just realize, man, it all builds up. Vectoring, missing elements, uh, bad color jobs, weird weird coloring. After a while, you're like, okay, it's, it's too much. Every little thing is, is passable, but altogether, it just feels too much. Yeah, I, I think the what compound of mistakes uh, is what makes or, or breaks the deal. Because, like I mentioned before, if you're missing out on lightning bolts on the flank for the Wonderbolt uniform, it's forgivable. I mean, if you're not familiar with the show and if you're drawing it, yeah, it, it's one of those cases where, ah, it, it's not, she, she forgot. So, eh, can, what can I say, eh? But, eh. like what I mentioned before, it's compounded. Things like, okay, uh, with the tracing, with the, uh, what you call this, uh, with the miscolors and stuff and whatnot. But anyhow, I'm going to carry on so we can talk about that one later on. So, uh, Rumble comes in with a glider. Uh, she, uh, sorry, uh, he tells, um, what you call this, Rainbow Dash and his brother about the glider made by Windsock and Scootaloo helped him build it and yeah, it's really awesome. They fly about and they fly past the crowd and uh, Rumble says thank you to General Dauntless and Dauntless says yeah, keep it flying. No force in the question can stop you. Not even Sir Princess Celestia. Oh no. And with that, the comic ends. But as we go on, we get to see a one-shot, an IDW one-shot for the IDW 2020. And this one is awesome because we get to see uh, art by Tony Kosciusko and it depicts somehow the ponies meeting with the younger selves. What? This is fun. I want to read this one. Can we read this one? I think we will. Yay. Soon enough. But let's move on with that comic end. So, Silver, what do you think overall? Well, okay. I didn't get to weigh in on the glider aspect because a glider is not very durable. It's a thin membrane of cloth stretched over a frame to catch air currents. There's no way a glider would actually be stronger in a in that level of a storm. And as you both pointed out, there's no way it could lift. This is being treated as a VTOL. Like a like a helicopter, when really it's not that's not accurate at all. But even setting that aside, you've just introduced to the world of Equestria a, a device that would let Earth ponies and unicorns fly not like a Pegasus, but on a similar level. Why is this not available to the public at large? Why is it buried in the the Wonderbolts Museum without any improved or enhanced models being developed why is someone like scootaloo 
being denied this opportunity. It's a fun idea and I really, I really like it. But the next step is then to meld it into the larger world. And honestly, it's kind of cruel that Schooler doesn't even get to try using this. Ever. True. I mean, the, the way that they depict the quote-unquote glider is a replacement for wings. And I, I, I tell you guys at home who are listening to this right now, if you go look at fan art done by the fans, especially the future Rain- Damage Rainbow Dash, there is a lot of quote-unquote wing replacements that are there by the fans. I mean, uh, one of the most popular quote-unquote crossovers is Pony slash Steampunk. There's a lot of quote-unquote Steampunk wings out there. So, take your pick. But anyway, um, for this one here with the gliders... It don't work that way unless the question is different. Which it is. I mean, we can we can all attest to that. But this is this is a difference based on our own world. It's not oh, there's magic, so the rules change. Nope. As far as we know, the physics are still the same. You're just breaking them. Stop breaking the physics. But anywho, uh, how how okay? There, I, I think there's going to be two parts for this. So, Silver, what do you think of the story? Okay, if you can look past the artwork and the questionable physics, it is a pretty enjoyable story. Uh, helping a character not give up and looking to the past for inspiration. So, that is enjoyable, and that's probably the most redeeming feature of this comic. I agree. I totally agree on that. I, I think for the art... We we all we kind of guess your opinion, but um, to confirm our thoughts on it, worst fears? No, no, no fears. Thoughts on it? Um, what do you think of the art? When I get to see uh, Baldari's work itself, I think that while there's some struggle with the pony form or remembering all the elements, she does have an energy and an ability to capture organic shapes, especially uh, circles. And with a little time and practice, I think she could become more proficient if she so desired. It's when, for reasons I don't know, that shortcuts and substitutions take place that the story, the the artwork itself uh, is much poorer. And in doing so, reflects poorly on the artist herself. To do good on that. To do good on that. Anything more to add, Silva? No, I think I've griped and groused enough. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, Tara, what about you? What do you think about the story? Uh, I, I like the story. I like how the uh, it's the lesson is basically don't give up on your dreams. And if you look up, uh, well, some history, I would say all history, but if you look up some history, you might learn something and you might w- maybe uh, bring something back from the past into the new generation. Like there could be a tradition that used to happen back then and be like, oh, we, we should start doing this now. And everyone likes it. And, I, and again, I like the lesson that, you know, no one uh, gives up on their dreams if you keep trying. And I like the whole thing with an earth pony wanting to be a wonder ball. You don't see that often. All right. Uh, that's a story. What about the art? All right. Well, for the art, as like while I was reading through the comic book and I'm like, most of these look like it's from the show. And then as we were going through this today... It's like, yeah, now it's more noticeable. You notice that basically almost in ev- not every single panel, but most of them, it's basically either traced out or they got a reference to something and they kind of trace it out or it's basically straight from a show or a comic or that um, that Wonderful Academy handbook in the one page. Yeah, so it's disappointing. Oh, okay. Anything more to add, Tara? No, that's everything for me. All right. And as for me, uh, for story, I, I like the story. The story is very uh, inspiring and very cool. I do like the idea of there's kind of uh, wing replacements for ponies who can't fly or want to fly. And yeah, that's cool. But a lot of question raises up like how do they fly, what blah, blah. blah. That doesn't make sense. I use magic. I mean, a lot of stuff. And for the art, I going into it without knowing what Silver mentioned before about 
the what you call this about the mm, what you call the the art and whatnot. Like I, I don't, I didn't know that this was going to be one of those scenarios where art was quote unquote stolen and sucks. But beyond that, after reading through the whole comic and looking at the art. Uh, at, at first, I I was taken aback by the the uh, the the cartoon style. Uh, usually, when comics are drawn from the official comics, they kind of use black outlines. They rarely use uh, show accurate quote unquote colors. They only did this with uh, the first episode of the micro series, and that there has its own problems. But uh, with this one, the the art at first was not bad until Silver pointed out a whole bunch of stuff. And once you kind of know it, it's hard to unsee it. That sounds like a passive way, Norman, of you saying, Silver ruined the comic for me. Not really. I mean... He pointed <laughs> out stuff that's kind of need to be. I, I'm just joking, by the way. Yeah, I mean, true, true. Uh, but still, uh, the, the 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 art is passable at times, and oh man, it's all over the place in terms of quality. But overall, I I I like the comic. Would I recommend go buying the issue? No, not really. I mean, this is a one shot, so. That's good, so you ain't missing much. But if you do want to read it, go buy it. But my total recommendation for you guys is to get the anthology. It's much better because it comes with other issues. So yay. But anyway, so what are we going to do for next week's podcast? Well, as we talked about before, you might need a break from pony life. I think you you need just a little bit of downtime. Mm -hmm. Recharge the old spirit. So... How about we continue with the comics and talk about Friendship is Magic issue 82, starring Rarity and Cerberus. Oh, I like. This one is going to be awesome because uh, art is going to be done by pencils and color is going to be done by Heather Breckel. Yay! There you go. So much funds, much funds to be had. Yay. <coughs> Anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at TheVisualGmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, on Twitter and DeviantArt, uh, you can find me under MLP Silver Quill. He's good times. Then on Ko-fi and Patreon, I, I have accounts under Silver Quill where you can support my comics and videos. And on YouTube, just do a search for After the Fact and Silver Quill. I'll pop up there. And every Wednesday on Equestria Daily, you'll find me posting either comic reviews or editorials. Or maybe even take it a personal day. I just, I'm so stressed. Oh. I'm so stressed. There's so much to do. It's okay, man. It's okay. You can take a break. You can play the video games. I, I heard that there's a new game out there that's hitting waves of fans. Which one's that? There's many, but from what I heard, there's what uh, League of Legends Rift. That's a League of Legends mobile game. Have you played it, Terra? No, I haven't. Ah, I do know that you played the League of Legends. Yeah, I used to. <laughs> uh, so now you can play it on the phone wherever you go and rage on those people who got no idea. Or top is fed. <laughs> Wait a minute, Norman. Did you get a sponsorship when we weren't looking? I wish. Uh, I just heard the game is out there and uh, seems fun. I might pick it up one day, but I'm not a fan of mobiles. <laughs> that that'd be something though, ain't, ain't it, Silver? Norman would just drop a sponsorship on us, and be like, "Wait, do, Norman, did you actually get a sponsorship?" I wish, and I am legally obligated to tell the audience at home if I am sponsored or not, which I'm not. This podcast brought to you by Easy Flow Stool Softeners. <laughs> It's like, why would you get this as a sponsorship? I don't know. They were available and they want us. I wish. They sigh. They sigh. But anywho, um, Tara, what about you? Where can the good people find you? 
Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324. Or they could just do a Google search, and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Yay, let's do it. By the way, Terra, uh, do you, you you have your own Discord channel, yeah? Yes, I do, actually. I almost forgot about that. Oh, cool, cool. And I was thinking, could you grab a bunch of people so we can play Among Us and we can record it? And we put it as an episode. That could work, right? Yeah, that could work. Yay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell button, the bell icon to stay up to date. And it's to radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also get us on live.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. show. With every support, you get weeks of access to review discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Tristan, and also Master of Leg. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Roman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MDS show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. So, you know, I, I've been thinking about this flying stuff, eh? Uh, wouldn't it be great that... Yeah, wouldn't it be great if that Scoodaloo is a tech genius and can build trusted rockets or boot rockets or whatever it is? We found that she became an astronaut. The, the flightless Pegasus gets higher than any other. Or probably Iron Pony. It could work. Iron Pony. I am Iron Pony! Yeah, put on this armor like the Mark One, and then like the Mark <laughs> Two, and so on. Yeah, and then have some pulses blasts or something like that. Yeah, we can. She can do that, right? I think she's gonna have to learn a little bit more and buckle down in school. I, I mean, yeah, it, it's gonna be a while. I mean, look at her. She she's teaching, so that's good. Got a more to add to that. <laughs> I got nothing. All right, joke in. Three, two, one. <laughs>